and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Kalia and friends to kick off our stream today. We're going to go ahead and play some ranked today. It's been a little while since we played ranked. Once people uh, people are saying they want to see some ranked again. So I got three fun decks that I like that we're playing in ranked. Plus, as you can see on the left hand side, that's what the R stands for. Plus, a mono black mid range deck that. Uh, was posted in the last 5-0 list that looks pretty sweet, but I did update a couple of things in the deck list also. But uh, first, let's start with Kalia and friends. This is our Mardu Angel Demon Dragon deck uh, that I've uh, had a lot of success with and just really enjoy playing. It's a fun deck to play. It's my kind of deck. Um, last time, we've been, we've been playing Angrass Rampages here in the two-mana slot that haven't been very impressive. And we talked about wanting to replace those last time. And so doing just that with putting a Noxious Grasp and a Dispark in the main deck, they're both a little more narrow, um, but I want to have ways to get rid of Planeswalkers, and both of these can do that, getting rid of like Nissa's, Big Teferi's, uh, things like that. Um, they don't answer Soren like Angrass Rampage could, and so that's that's you know not ideal, but... Um, and honestly, you know what? Let's let's actually change one other thing. Because we have Dispark in the main deck, they can get rid of a Wilderness Reclamation. I want to play one Bedev a D Bedevil instead of this Mortify. Actually, now, where Bedevil can still can kill Planeswalkers and everything there in our three mana slot. Um, like I would have liked to have like Bedevils instead of these, but I don't want to play more three mana cards. We already have just lots of threes. I want to keep our our curve where we have a good amount of twos as well. So that's why we're going with these. Um, uh, but I, I did add a dev Devout Decree in the sideboard, uh, thinking of Soren, um, like that, and just you know a pretty good card to have against vampires. Uh, but yeah, we got we got a whole bunch of angels here. We're just trying to um, you know win in the air. Basically, we have our Kalias that get us our card advantage, our, um, and find us all these really cool angels. And then, of course, we can get some demons and dragons as well. Embodiment of Agonies, as we've talked about a few times, this is a card that you don't want to really play on turn three, but later on in the game is is a really valuable card. Um, just It's just very big, has death touch. Um, so even if you do play it early as like a blocker, it can be a good blocker to trade. Um, but it's frequently 5-5 five, five, five for three, a 6-6, six, six, a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's just so big. I really like this card. Um... Yeah, Prison Realm's an option too, but I'm I'm not a big fan of Prison Realm whenever I want to kill Planeswalkers, especially like the Teferis. You know, if I want to kill a Teferi, they can use another, you know, if I want to kill like the three mana Teferi, they can use the five mana Teferi to tuck it. They get their their um Planeswalker back. I just don't like how vulnerable Prison Realm is. But anyway, uh let's let's go ahead and play some ranked matches today. See how we do. A little ways away from Mythic. Um, don't think we're getting to Mythic today unless we have a really awesome win streak, but you know. You never know. Maybe we can. Yeah, we'll be playing. Oh, absolutely. We're going to be playing Rampaging Ferocid on decks whenever that's legal to play on Arena. That's not going to be until a week from tomorrow, is whenever. You'll be able to start playing Ferocidon on Arena. But yeah, we'll be putting Ferocidon in decks. We may have just like Ferocidon Day, like the first day, and play like four different Ferocidon decks. Okay. So. Slow hand. But Lyra Dawnbringer can catch us up, and like Lyra and Resplendent Angel can do just ridiculous stuff together. So we'll go ahead and try it out. And of course, I was definitely hoping to draw an untapped land as well to start playing these on turn three. Hasn't happened yet, but doesn't mean it won't. Okay, maybe it won't. All right, so this looks like 
the Golos Nexus deck. Which can be a challenge for sure. For us. There's not really any uh, um, any card I need to find with Kalia. Really, I just need to draw lands. Like, this has been pretty bad draw steps for us of all four spells, no lands. We really just need lands. Um, Kalia doesn't help us get lands. So instead, I'm just going to play Resplendent Angel, maybe play another Resplendent Angel next turn. You know, maybe after that we follow up with the Dawnbringer. They can just give all these angels, uh, you know, add the power, give them lifelink. Where... Kalia is not an angel in that respect. Hey, high tech. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where our, our lands are at. They're not here, that's for sure. I don't know where they are, but they're not here. All right, we're going to move on. I'm just going to keep on getting more of those. What's up, Narnian? Good morning. All right, so definitely want an extra to spark. And suppose Clarions? I'm not really sure about the Clarions, honestly. Let's see. I want all these Blood Suns. There we go. So I want the Blood Suns. I want Duress. You want to play Gideon? I'm thinking no Chandra. No Tithe Taker. No Cast Down, really. So let's get rid of a Kalia as Kalia dies to Clarion. Hey Zerg. Yeah, our opponent's deck is built to go over the top of mid-range decks. Which is exactly what we have here. Not a spectacular hand for us. We don't have any good interaction. But at least, at least we have four lands and we have a shock land. That was better than last time. Hmm.
That didn't go too well. Hey, what's up, love? Thanks for the resub there. And hey, Matthew. You are a rock star. Thank you so much there, love. Alright, and the opponent has the slower hand this time. Oh, that's sub number two on the day. I did not update that earlier. RMW Waffle joining in. Thanks so much there, Waffle. No, I didn't do the weekly challenge yet. Neoform and a Plague Mare helps. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, you, there's a bunch of Saverlings everywhere. All right, getting a Noxious Grasp in here over a Duress. I kind of forgot about Krasis. So they have, like, Krasis and Risen Reef, which I guess both of those creatures die to cast down. Um, but they could also have, like, Tamio that we can Noxious Grasp as well. Or I don't, I don't think they have Yurok, but you never know, maybe. They have Green Cavalier, which that gets cast down, but... So now our hand's on the other side. Last time we just had three threats, no interaction. Now it's just three interaction, no threats. I think hopefully we just draw into our threats here. But I just want to keep, I want to keep four lands, three spells. I don't really want to be mulliganing that, even though it's not ideal spells. With with how our deck doesn't have, like, card advantage for the most part, like, we don't have ways to just draw a whole lot of cards, at least. Um, I don't think they can play anything to the spark this next turn. This is not a deck that mulligans too well. Unfortunately, we just drew two more interaction spells. Not threats. Well, we drew one threat. That will be disparked. <clears throat> Wouldn't mind Blood Sun for if we were going to be drawing interaction. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Matthew. Gotta get rid of those Goluses. Um, the best thing about playing Legion's End right now is just how it uses my mana. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do it. It lets me attack also. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> Another one of those? Ugh. That just gives them six tokens. Could be more also if Risen refits. Did. Yeah, that would have been nice having the Legion's End now and having uh, Bedevil plus Legion's End. That would have been ideal. Um, gosh. That was a pretty horrible turn for me. That was that was basically the worst possible turn that could happen with what my opponent had. Yeah, that was the worst possible. So I guess I I guess I Clarion and give them Golos, but all they're gonna do with Golos is just refill. I don't really have another choice though. So attacking or not attacking, I'd stay at 18, but one way they go to 13. Yeah, I was taking lethal if I killed Golos. Uh, This game. Oh, they they could just act could have just activated Field of Ruin. They have Lethal on me the next turn. Oh, what that was a really bad draw for me there. That third Golos. All right, Owen one. Yeah, Field of Dead's tough. Um, you know, we have three Blood Suns in here. Didn't see him. Yeah, feel the dead stuff. You can find the deck list on the Stream Decker page. There. Um, yeah. Again, we're we're playing a deck that just doesn't mulligan very well. So we want to just keep keep hands for the most part even if it is a little sketchy um yeah yeah rampaging for Ocidon. will be a fun card to play I, i'm glad that card's on ban for a few weeks As far as the do, I think it's worth crafting. It's just, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I'm not very good at answering that question because that's you know it's it's hard for me to tell people what I have come for to do with their life, kind of thing. Um, you know, everybody's situation is different. I require your body, not your soul. Um. Yeah, so if, if I could only craft one deck, I probably would not craft that blue-white flyer deck. I won't but from the world with that being said, only time with that tell. being said, um, that we 
about six days ago or so, you know, you can check check like the YouTube channel or check back on the stream decker from about six days ago. We played a non a non rotation proof version of the blue white flyers, that, which only changed just a couple of cards, really not very many cards. But and we did a lot better with that version. And so I would I recommend crafting that version. And from what I've heard from other people, that other people play that deck in best of one and say they do really well with it in best of one and think it's just a really good best of one deck where um, you know, like they'll play like the best of one event on here and just grind a lot of gold with that deck. It's really fast. As far as like a deck to grind gold and everything, I actually do think that's a really good choice for, for best of one there. Um, because it is a, a fast deck and uh, can outrace other aggro decks and everything. So, um, okay, you're only doing you were only doing best of one anyway. So yeah, that's a that's a really good choice, and so I'd recommend that one from about six days ago. I can. Uh, it's easiest. For, it's easiest to find on the YouTube channel. I can go find it real quick and just go to YouTube. Go Azorius Sky Todd Stevens. Do, 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 do. And then deck list. I'm gonna have to sideboard against what Esper Control. I want that. 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 I don't want this, those, those. Um, Trim a Shalai and a Lyra and some other expensive card. Not really a. All right, here you go. That that list right there. Keep. Yeah, I I've thought about doing some more best best of one stuff, but the thing about the best of one format is it does really limit what you can play what you want to play. Looks like my opponent was mulliganing to oblivion and wanted to move on to the next match. You really just want to play something very aggressive and very very linear, I guess is the way to do it. You don't want to really play something with... Uh, like I like playing a whole bunch of mid-range decks that can kind of you know, be the aggro against control or, or be the control against aggro, like all that kind of stuff. And you don't want to do that in best of one. Best of one rewards you for having a singular game plan that you're trying to achieve and trying to achieve it more than than and better than the other decks uh, singular game plan. Um, and by linear, linear doesn't always mean. Um, And linear also doesn't always mean aggro. You know, linear can be like a, a combo deck. Like how that's why Nexus was so good in best of one. Um, linear can also mean just a, con a control deck. How we've seen like Esper Control be a, a, a big part of best of one. Um, it's just just a really hyper control deck that blanks all sorts of removals and, and does a really good job of removing threats and everything. And um, so like a, a really controlling control deck is a very good linear deck that's what i'm and so that's what i'm talking about is you want to be like one of those pillars as we talked about i don't like mulliganing with this deck but this hand is not spectacular i mean we have clarion that fixes up any against aggro we have clarion we just got to draw a land for that and then we can start doing this stuff it could be fine I, okay, yeah, you only have two Supreme Phantoms. I would play... I 
I don't think you just want to add in two favorable wins. You need a lot of creatures for Safara. So I don't think you just want to replace them with just favorable wins. I could see I I could see doing one favorable wins, but I wouldn't do a sec I wanna do another. I would play another one or two mana flying creature. Two mana, your best option I guess is or I don't, I don't know. Like whatever whatever other flying creature you got. Um, I don't know how we're gonna beat cut this combo with this hand that we currently have right now. Quite yet. Haven't figured that out yet. My hand is not very good. <laughs> you can say that. Our being on the draw and trying to draw a land plan did not work. Did not work in the slightest. Instead of discarding any of these cards and giving my opponent more information about what I'm doing, I'm just going to go to the next game. So this can exile Kethis. We could... It's like commanding the Dread Horde and like taking a lot of their stuff. Yeah, I guess it could happen. I guess it could work. Noxious Grasp can kill some stuff. Duress some things. Chandra Exiles, which is definitely important. I want to get some fast attacking in with Gideon. Yeah, cast down only kills the diligent excavator, nothing else. That one can probably go. What do they got for four mana for Dispark? Like Tamio? Anything else? It's the only thing that's coming to mind right now. I need to trim some of this top end. And I'm not... I'm going to actually trim Kalia. And put in these Clarions instead. Oh, cool. That row comes out today? Yeah. No no bounties today, though. That is true. We could get lucky and steal an Ashiok. If they mill over an Ashiok, we could dread hoard an Ashiok. That's something that could happen in life. Yeah, no. If only Tithe Taker was Thalia. I'd say pay an extra mana for each non-creature spell. Thank you. I'm expecting more wolves in the next set. Wolves seem like a type of creature. That seems like a creature type that they'll have some of in a fairy tale set. Especially with like planting night pack ambusher beforehand. Something they like to do with planting the cards like that. Okay, Jace and Teshar as other Dispar kits. All oh, right, there are Nurse's Ruinous Blast deck. I guess that makes... That does make me want to play the... I did not stop Sh this fight. The second Shalai over the first Seraph of the Scales. I think if we if we win this game, I'll be putting in Shalai number two and cutting. I have like one Shalai, one Seraph. I've seen these tricks before. The weak feeds the strong. Not a good turn for me. And no, I'm not going to be Legion's ending a Fibblethip. Need a Legion's end a much more 
important cards such as Diligent Excavator. That's too bad. Yeah, you can Legion's End Fibblethip, but yeah, it fit it. Yeah, that's what happens. It, the spell would fizzle. Fibblethip would just uh, get shuffled into the library. But you can still target Fibblethip. Hmm. You would make an excellent informant. Hmm. I know I noticed this somewhere. Do not provoke me. <laughs> you are setting a what bad a example. Mess I've made. Do not harm my scrolls. Gonna get rid of this Tamio. Ever see a volcano erupt in person? You're about to. I have become too Exploded. involved with my work. <laughs> yes, Banky, I, I know. Yep. We're trying to prevent that from happening, us getting milled out. Research. I have learned much from my ancestors. You will become dust. All right, what do they got for this last? What are they? What do we got for the, this here? Okay. So they had the ability to cast Kethys, but chose not to. Not being on fire problem. I All wish stories you... must end. Time for a drink. <sighs> okay, well, we'll be able to Doom Whisper for basically anything we want. Which I guess may be Command the Dread Horde, honestly. Yeah, I understand why they didn't play the Kethys. I'm reaching my boiling point. No, we're not dead right now. The looks like the Chandra's gonna die though. Click 
they're gonna go Mox and then uh, Othakaya. Well, I guess they could. Well, actually, they'll probably just go Ruinous Blast. Yeah, they'll just Ruinous Blast away these two things and then they'll attack. Gosh, these cards aren't bad. So Chandra's get our both our creatures and Chandra will be gone, but we're still gonna have Soren. Next turn I'm going double Clarion to kill the Kethis. We can probably just do better than this. We're at thirty six. Looking for maybe something that kills Kethis better. There we go, that kills. The better use of a card to kill Kethis. And we just start attacking now. I hope we can finish them off next turn. Right on schedule. Well darn. It's gonna be another turn. Let's try this. Going to game number three. So yeah, with Urza's Ruinous Blast in mind, let's get this Shalai over the Seraph. And I guess Kalia... I'm not sure if I really want to play Kalia, but I guess... Yeah, we'll just play the Kalias instead of Embodiments. So I guess we do want to play... Legendary stuff. The problem is Kalia just doesn't really fit with Clarion. We do have a good amount of stuff to Dispark, actually. Let's get another Dispark in here. But yeah, I guess Kalia and Resplendent Angel both die to Oath of Kaya, which isn't great. Maybe I cut a Resplendent. Resplendent's so good, though. 
That's really good. All kind of embodiment. All right, let's give this a try. Hey, track team. And Alexis Bros. Hey, Alexis. All right, game number three. Let's go. I suppose. Doesn't feel like it's ideal. All right, so they kept the card on top. So I'm actually going to wait a turn before I duress to see, you know, we'll get to kind of see what they kept. Like maybe they had like a, a Tamiyo or an Ashiok or something like that that they kept on top that they wanted to be playing here. Don't know why they... I don't know why they shocked there. I just wanted to bluff something. Sorry I'm late. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. I kind of wish I would have just taken Teferi and let them minus Ashiok twice, I guess. Just <laughs> My removal spells are so awkward. Four or greater, two or less, this cost three. <laughs> it's so awkward. Like their most important card costs exactly three mana, and it has four toughness, so my Clarion doesn't hit it. It's a legendary, so cast down doesn't hit it. It's just so hard to kill this Kethis. I have like nothing. Should have seen that coming. Yeah, baffling end. That's the one I need. Walk the plank. Not a merfolk advisor, this right? It's an elf advisor. Why is an elf so big? This a three, is four a elf? I've got it. I mean, I guess not Steel Leaf Champion big. Steel Leaf Champion's an elf. For five, four. For three mana. That's how it was meant to happen. Yeah, Steel Leaf is riding a, a giant Kavu. Which is why it's large. But yeah, that, that's just a that's just an advisor being a 3-4. Darkness. 
All right, let's get that lifelink in here. I want to find another Resplendent Angel, if possible. Alright, well, I guess I'm keeping both of these cards. Hmm. Definitely want Command. I mean, I guess if I exile Kethis, they just have a backup Kethis. So I was I was doing all that before activating Soren because if we would have found a resplendent angel I could have ditched the could have put the resplendent angel in the graveyard and then minus Soren and got back the resplendent angel. All right, a couple of good wins here for our Mardu deck. Kethis be dragging a wagon. Advisors are tough guys. Leo holds a 3-3 three, three, and an advisor as well. Play first. Mm. All the shock lands. Yeah, our opponent didn't didn't draw the best of those two games. You know, they had a lot of lands, but um, but yeah, you're right. Their deck didn't look super impressive either, and that's that could be why their deck didn't look impressive. Though to be fair, uh oh, Dino Swords, Dinos and Swords, Dino Swords. This could get real explosive real fast. Uh, that's a problem. It's a big time problem. Serum, welcome to the channel. Thanks for that support. I appreciate that. Appreciate that Twitch Prime sub there. Ooh. So if I play... Nah, we're, we're going to shock in for Seraph, I guess. Oh, thanks so much, Seraph. Throne of Eldraine is just going to be elves riding dinosaurs. This is kind of their perfect hand. Exactly what they want. It's not great for me. All right, double block Reggie or single block Ripjaw. I guess it's double block Reggie.
And Magic Pockets also getting in on the hype action. Welcome as well, Magic Pockets. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're trying the flying deck. Win every game on the play, lose every game on the draw. That's some good quality magic right there. That's best of one. <laughs> oh no, that was a good... It's 250 Magic Pocket, so yeah. That's... It's something. Get half of the subs. As long as there's no Collision Colossus or anything crazy here, my plan next turn is to attack with Dawnbringer, gain 5 life, play Resplendent Angel. Looks like we've stabilized. They had no Collision Colossus, no Galta to finish us off. Their last two turns haven't been that good. I've just ripped all go. At least they did that before Embodiment of Agonies entered, but that definitely hurt. That definitely hurt. We're going to do some chump blocking on Riptar Raptors now. Did they just give, give Ceratops haste? No, they gave Ceratops trample. They draw two cards. Hmm. Kind of just kill that thing. They draw one card. And then I'm taking uh, six damages. I should be just fine. Unless there's like a Galta or something, or Collision Colossus. That was a really good card to draw. Hey Caesar, good afternoon. Your blood is mine. Accept the darkness within. It's hard to beat all these lifelink flyers. You think I'm a crazy beast? Where do you see my knights? But a way to do that is have a removal spell. So they can have Ripjaw fight Dawnbringer if they want. And then I don't have all the lifelink stuff, but obviously I still gain five from that fight. They have Ripjaw fight Resplendent. It doesn't really seem like they have Colossus. Oh, no. 
So they're gonna like fight after combat to kill the resplendent angel. Is my guess. Let's chump block so, they, so the raptor won't survive. They do that. I mean, they, they have to do that, otherwise they're dead. We'll at least kill Rippy. Now, Tithe Taker only taxes them during my turn. Does not tax them at all during their, their turn. Okay, Dawnbringer down. That's a surprise. They're dead now. I just have, like, Resplendent Angel is just lethal. Resplendent Angel just kills them. Because we gain five life, so we make a 4 4. It has the activated ability. They had to kill a Resplendent Angel. Yeah, they probably didn't realize Resplendent Angel triggering yet yeah, each turn, like triggering on their turn. Alright, so let's get this Decree in here. Grasp. Dispark. I don't hate Clarion. Clarion kill like those two mana dino, like those two mana red creatures are cards you kinda have to kill. But we're on the draw. I kind of I prefer Clarion on the play because three mana on the draw, they're going to already have their two mana Dino in play, and obviously dealing damage to Ripjaw Raptor isn't ideal. So let's let's cut Clarion then. Is Tithaker going to be able to do enough for us? I mean, I I do like how Tithaker chump blocks and then leaves another one one and chump blocks again. I like that quite a bit. So what are the other two cards I'm cutting? Kalia and a Hellkite? I don't know, the, the Kalia the last game turned into the Seraph also, which teamed up to take down a 7-6. Hmm. I'm going to take out a Hellkite. We do need to take out one 5-drop, and so it'll be Hellkite. No, Agonies is awesome in this matchup. Agonies has Death Touch. Agony just, Agonies just trades with, you know, like the 7-6 Dinos. We'll, we'll get rid of one Tithe Taker. This is like a, this is a great matchup for Embodiment of Agonies. Well, again, hmm, three lands or four lands with a with no Doom Whisper. It's either getting rid of Doom Whisper or getting rid of land. Which I guess it'd have to be one of these two lands, and I guess it'd probably be Temple. So I want to keep the double black. So Temple or Doom Whisper. Things like if, we'll get rid of Temple. Yeah, because the the Death Touch flying creature, Embodiment of Agony is like why am I playing that over Spawn of Mayhem? Well, it costs it costs three instead of four. Most all the time, Embodiment's going to be costing four. Or sorry, Spawn of Agonies is going to be costing four most of the time against, uh, or like in this deck. And Spawn of Mayhem dealing damage to each player 
it, it's a really aggressive card how it does that, how it just do, does a damage to each player every turn, and that's... And I, I don't really want that aggressive of a card in the deck. And as far as late game, Embodiment has a lot higher upside late game of being a lot bigger. Um, turn three. Turn three, we'd rather have... Or, well, like... Turn 3 embodiment's not great, but most of the time we're not actually playing Spawn of Mayhem on turn 3 anyway. Alright, good old Death Touch. Come on back, Embodiment. And then that's the other thing. Embodiment works really well with Soren here. Spawn of Mayhem doesn't because it costs four. You can't just bring back Spawn of Mayhem and keep Soren around like you can with Embodiment. Yeah, Embodiment does count itself in the graveyard whenever you take it out of the graveyard. It sees itself in the graveyard. So yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah, this game went really, really well. That is for sure. Embodiment at Agonies just did everything. Like them playing Marauding Raptor Savage Stomp to kill it and just trade... You know, trade two for one. And then that Soren top deck. So I'm at 11. A lot of stuff. And there we go. Three and one. Yeah, we do have some sweet synergies in here. Yeah, Embodiment of Agony is a really underrated card. That's good. And yeah, Soren. Soren is just incredible. All right, we're playing one more match here. We're going to play five matches with the deck total. Let's play one more here. See if we can get a 4-1 in ranked with Kalia and friends. It's a, a pretty cool little deck here. Hopefully we can get that 4-1 instead of the 3-2. It's a big difference. But as we talked about, tech doesn't mulligan perfectly, and we're just going to be keeping this. Bleh. Field of the Dead. We lost a Field of the Dead earlier. That was our loss. It was a different kind of Field of the Dead deck, though, than what this looks like. This is Bant. We played against five color earlier. But pretty good hand for them on the play, you know, having turn two rejuvenator. They didn't have a land drop though? Question mark? No, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. I 
I have three Blood Suns on the board. Maybe I should have four. The Grazer has reach, so that, that little 1-1's one, not helping us. But I wanted to get the Tithe Taker in the graveyard for embodiment. Just to be able to play embodiment, basically. Yeah, we have we have a lot of tools that are that are pretty good in this matchup. Whether or not they come through for us, you know, is a different story. But we have a lot of a lot of good tools. Yeah, with with flyers, and then yeah, we have like Legion's End, Clarion, Blood Sun. And then, you know, lifelink, lifelink flyers that can also race. That is a card, though, that I have major troubles with. Time wipe. I was thinking about just holding the 1-1 the one, one death touch back. To block, to be honest. Trade it off and then bring it back with Soren to be larger. I was just gonna. That's why I didn't uh, attack with it. I guess I could have cast down the deputy first, and then I would have, and I'd have a four-four. I wanted to do instant speed, cast down, and end step kind of thing. That card's really good. Hmm. So if I don't kill the Krasis... Hello, Brazil. Yeah, I could see Flood of Tears being underused. I could see that. Yeah, Soren can just bring back creatures.
So I know I have one Clarion in the main deck, and I and I do have the two Legion's Ends also, so I need to find one of those. Time wipe's tough though, them playing time wipe. Like, imagine how like we would have been able to do a lot of damage to them with a couple of turns with like that Aurelia there. My deck's not very good against sweepers. That's just what's gonna be like when you're playing three to five mana creatures. I don't think we need Ritual of Soot. I don't I don't think Ritual of Soot's better than Clarion. No, I don't think Sultai Field is better than Bant. I'm not incredibly convinced that Bant is better than Sultai, though, either. Can't really stay alive there. Alright, Grasp, Duress. Blood Sun. Clarion. This thing kills a whole bunch of zombies. I don't really hate Gideon here. Because again, it's a card that doesn't get time wiped. I do not want to spark at all. Obviously, that card's out. But I was just thinking, like, what else? Like, maybe Gideon. I'll throw Gideon in here. All right, so Despark is out. This is not a tie taker matchup either. That card is out. Um, Kalia, like, I do like the Angels because you know, like, the Angels with Dawnbringer can give us like a, a good amount of life link. Um, but. Kalia isn't an angel and dies to Clarion. Resplendent Angel dies to Clarion, but Elise is an angel. I feel like I need to cut a 5-mana card if I'm bringing in Chandra, but I, I like all these 5-mana cards. I guess it's Hellkite. Alright, how's this look? Alright, looks reasonable. Hey, that's awesome. How about way to go? Good job. Good job. It's hard to play Sell the Wreckage against a Teferi deck. But then of course, you know, you, you settle a whole bunch of uh, zombies, they you know, they get a lot of lands and get a bunch more zombies also. Yeah, now Legion's End and Clarion show up. Couldn't have showed up last game, huh? There you go, ELG. I I heard the people said that from now on it's not top thousand for Mythic to get qualified 
it's top 1200. So don't need to, so you can at least get, you know, makes it a little easier to grind to that then. If you're trying to grind. Right on time, Gideon. Your light will cleave the darkness. Well, Gideon hits harder than Shalai. And getting Gideon in play right away where you can start ticking up Gideon is ideal. Correct. Non-land. Yeah, you can only exile non-land permanents. You cannot exile a field of the dead. Let's slow this down. I've got time. Hmm. Share in my light. Indestructible. All right, well, we don't need to worry about instant speed scape shift immediately. I guess I need four, um, what? Immortal Sun? What is that thing doing? I don't really want to play Shalai because it might how my opponent played that kind of seems like you know like they're gonna be playing time wipe here. I'll just get the Chandra out of my hand, I guess. I know it doesn't do anything. Well I I took out to Sparks. Not expecting immortal not expecting immortal sun whatsoever. Alright, it was time wipe. Called that at least. This is going to be tough to beat this Immortal Sun. I was not prepared for Immortal Sun at all. They're just drawing two cards a turn. I don't really envision us winning this game. I can 
Take a hit or two. I guess, yeah, it does protect against Flame Sweep, Cry of the Carnarium, those, both of those. Um, but yeah, I guess they were just expecting me to have a lot of Planeswalkers. It stops their own Teferis, which is kind of good for me. Teferi is a, a problematic card. But drawing two cards a turn, not really beating that. Yeah, Mortify just destroys enchantments. Oh, I do have Bedevil. So I have a Bedevil in here. So I do have an out. I have one card that I could draw. That's an out. So they want to Krasis with Counterspell, I guess. <clears throat> Or, why do they use? What's this other mana for? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible they forgot about the make stuff cheaper part of the garden. Hey WQ, going good. Looks like we're about to be three and two though. Unfortunately. Uh, no, I did not miss the life gain for triggering for casting Clarion after combat. Because, of course, if I cast Clarion before combat, they won't block with the Hydroid Crisis. So in order to get them to block with Hydroid Crisis, cast that after combat. I think if we would have been able to just be activating the, the Gideon every turn, if we could have been activating Chandra all these turns. This Immortal Sun. Yeah, I have I have one card that kills Immortal Sun. I have one Bedevil. It's not good. So it looks like both of our losses will be to Field of the Dead decks. We have we did draw zero Blood Suns as well. Yeah, because I want Chilai to be able to block for Gideon. Why didn't attack with Shalai? One, 
wanted to be able to block. Since they didn't counter the Noxious Grasp, it was like they're sitting there with the two mana, they're gonna be playing the Grow Spiral. It was definitely unfortunate that they put another Field of the Dead in though, so they had so they get the two creatures. They're at 21 cards. <laughs> They've drawn 23, 23 more cards than I have by now. It's really hard to overcome an extra 23 cards. That's for sure. All right, well, Immortal Sun got us. That was the card that single-handedly defeated me that game. That was a tough one. I was not expecting that card. All right, so yeah, so we went, so we went three, two, both of our losses to Field of the Dead. Dex not drawing any of these Blood Suns. Could have a fourth in here, I suppose, but honestly, I liked how our, our deck played overall. Um, those are just kind of some some tough draws there against the Field of the Dead decks, and and even without the Blood Sun, that other that last game, I liked our chances. Besides that, Immortal Sun that really really shut me down. Um, but oh well, that happens. Uh, and then of course, like the time wipes, you know. I think it's pretty common for the Bantex to be playing Time Wipes these days. It seems like they're they're moving towards that card, um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt us any less. Uh, when you're playing, like, you know, just look at the, the cards in our deck. All these Angels, these are not good cards against Time Wipe, and that, that's what really, really slowed us down the game one and hurt us quite a bit, and then, yeah, the game two, Immortal Sun. So a couple of cards that you don't see a lot, but... They got us really good. All right, but that's Kalia and friends. Uh, overall, felt like a, a good, strong deck besides besides those couple matches to feel the dead and like you know like those situations there. But had a lot of good showings, uh, with a, a lot of uh, cool little interactions with the deck. Fun to play, like always. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoy the deck. And of course, if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate those. Leave a comment as well. Uh, but thanks for watching, Kali and friends, and I'll see you for the next video.